Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me again today. As always, my fusion, and this is Mission Force Cyberstorm. So we're back at the Herc base. We have about 7,000 credits in the bank. We have our various Hercs here. Let's see what we own. I just have to remind myself real quick, I haven't played this in a couple of days. We've got Cyclops, Hecaton. I'm actually going to rename Hecaton because that's really a name that should be saved for a giant. We're going to call him Bluebeard. So we've got Cyclops, Mr. Miyagi, Bluebeard, and Sir Kai uh, with his 120mm auto cannons. I believe, yes, everyone has proto nanite repairs. We've got all of our bioderms linked that we need. And we're going to go in here, we're going to heal all of our bioderms. And Model 101 has served us well for what she is, but uh, her service is no longer required, so we are going to recycle her. And we get to hear the lovely screams of a bioderm dying. So Kadisha is in Cyclops. She does not need any additional training. Uh, actually, I'm going to pump up her advanced tech, just because at some time in the future, I may want her to use EMPs. Uh, Borok in Mr. Miyagi could use some missile training. Uh, a lot of energy training. Uh, and some cannon training as well. Cannon is by far his best skill besides piloting. Jean in Bluebeard has, will pump up his advanced tech as well. And Tarsus, all he needs is piloting, because otherwise he is using purely cannon weapons at the moment. So, all our bioderms are taken care of. Um, that kind of training can be very valuable, because those extra 10-15% can really make a difference in combat. So we've got our four Hercs. Still all defend installation missions. They take three months. Well, this one only takes two months. Uh, the mining missions, there is that one month mining mission still out there. But, eh, I don't really want to go on just mining missions, especially with these slow Hercs. Let's defend an installation on Parsis. We're supposed to defend for eight turns, but I very much doubt that we'll be here for eight turns. So, Warning, Mr. Miyagi. All right, we've got a Parasite V1 over there. Let's get Bluebeard over, see if we can't deal with him. Systems. We'll turn on our ore extractor, since we're here. All right, he's returning fire, but not very effectively. Of course, we're not hitting him very effectively either. All right, so the Parasite's dead. Let's move forward a little bit, see if we can see any others. Don't see any others immediately. But I'm going to retreat Mr. Miyagi behind this cliff and move his shields. Well, I really don't know which way they'll be coming from, so I'm just going to leave his shield centered for now. We're going to have Cyclops facing this direction, Bluebeard facing that direction. I guess Mr. Miyagi will turn his tune his shields a little this way. And then we'll have Sir Kai also taking cover. Everybody's going to crouch. Shields. And we'll see where they come from. Okay, so this is a more serious cybrid force. We have two parasites, which are fairly heavily armed for their size, but very small. And then we have two genocytes, which are sort of a workhorse cybrid unit. They carry, I think it's two energy weapons, two missiles, and possibly also two cannons. So they kind of have a... and those are medium-sized mounts, so they can mount some pretty respectable weapons. Um, they're effectively the equivalent of ogres. So we're going to move Bluebeard over in this direction. Um, I don't really want... I want him to be shooting, effectively, so... You also may notice their shields are much tougher than parasite shields. Uh, no, 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 oh, crap, okay. I think I'm on a different... yeah, I'm on a different shield facing. Shoot. Uh, 81%. 76%. I'm going to try to take down this Parasite, actually. Can I hit him with my EMPs, maybe? No, I can't get close enough. I go, oh, crap. And now I'm out of cover. So we're going to crouch Mr. Miyagi, get his shields pointed all that direction. We're going to get Sir Kai over here and have his shields pointed all that direction. We're going to crouch. Shields in front. We're going to crouch. Shields in front and slightly to the left. 
Okay, they've also got a Malignus. A Malignus is like an upgrade, upgraded version of the Arachnus. It mounts four medium energy weapons and two missiles. So it's relatively fragile, more fragile than the Genocide, but it's very heavily armed. You, you get around behind the Genocide? Yes, you can, good. Give it a few cannon rounds. And you finish it off with your lasers? No. Weapon Alright, Parasite down. We'll just hurt his shields a little bit. And move back. I'm rotating like that because uh, the patch for Cyberstorm, I am playing the 1.1 version, the patched version. And the patch does have one problem, which is that uh, it enables opportunity fire for your Herx. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, here's the problem. Especially when you're fighting Cybrids on multiple sides, Whenever your Herc takes an opportunity shot during the Cybrid turn, it turns to face the Cybrid that it was shooting at. Shield. And you see the problem? When your Herc turns unexpectedly like that and unpredictably, its shield facings end up all messed up because it may well be that your Herc is being flanked by a Spectre over here, turns and takes a snapshot at the Spectre and exposes a weak side Hex facing to the Nihilus or Malignus or Genocide that is out here, loses its shields and then gets obliterated by missile and cannon fire from every cybrid in that direction. So you have to be very careful about opportunity fire, and you have to be very careful about controlling what facing cybrids are on. Like this situation, this is a bad situation for him to be in, um, especially with no movement. He's definitely going to want to crouch, and then he's going to have to turn tune his shields very carefully, like like that or something um just to see to hopefully hopefully this genocide's weapons have all been destroyed and what i can do is actually i can make a bid to destroy it by just pumping 120 millimeter rounds through its shields and there we go i managed to destroy it mr miyagi this guy is down in a hole what i would like would be okay i can get the giant over there what i would like to do would be to run right up on him drop my emps that breaks his shields, and then unload my cannons. Okay, good. I still do have that Malignus, and Mr. Miyagi is now vulnerable, but his 1,200 shields are tough enough to take the Malignus' shots, I believe. And that Malignus is now wandering out right into the middle of us, so... And we've eliminated the cybrids. So I'm not going to leave the map. I'm going to mine out this ore that's sitting around and whatever other ore I could find. But I will see you back on the debriefing screen. All right, and we're back. We ended up mining about 90% of the ore on the map. Uh, I just left before I fully finished exploring the map because uh, some of the terrain was just very slow to get through. And I am an impatient person. So uh, we saved the base. We mined the ore. We got 97% of the possible rating points, which was 43,000 credits. So, let's see what management of upgrades can be done with 43,000 clops. We could upgrade their lower guns to EMPs. Uh, the EMPs do a lot more damage, but have half the range and require the advanced tech skill. If we look at our bioderms real quick... Kadisha's advanced tech is abysmal. Uh, Jean's advanced tech is pretty decent, so we would want to upgrade... Kadisha, probably, before we went for that. So let's see if we can get a better Bioderm, maybe. Maybe buy another Herc for Kadisha. Uh, let's see. We need Advanced Tech and Energy. Crow has high Advanced Tech and decent Energy. He costs 15,000, so he's not a cheap Bioderm at all, but he does live for seven years, so it might be worth investing in a Crow. Uh, Jath has a high Advanced Tech, but a very poor Energy skill. Jamax has high advanced tech and decent energy. His missile and cannon are abysmal. He might grow out of that. Korak Kadisha. Koras is decent and cheap. Let's get a Koras. So, piloting, energy, cannon, advanced tech. Those are looking reasonable. His cannon skill is poor, but oh well. 
Uh, ogres are mainly around for bringing down shields anyway. We have other options for dealing damage. So, we're going to get an ogre. We're going to name him Oni. And let's give him a flexive drive. Reactor is standard, bigger battery, better shield. Leave the sensors alone because we have the, um, the sensei, Mr. Miyagi, to do our scanning for us. We're going to go up to SC-1000s. EMP is on the lower arms. Uh, we're going to leave the 50mm autocannons for now, and we don't have enough to afford a proto-nanite repair for him, so it'll be a little dangerous taking him into the field. But we are going to give him a couple of fueler devices and a single-band ECM. Okay, so we've got most of what we want for him. Perk base, biodome facility. And now let's link Koras to the Oni, and we will be good to go. Let's hit up another mission. So the missions cycle through depending on what you've done, of course. So here we have a reconnaissance mission has replaced that defend base, defend installation mission that we went on. Um, these all take three months and they're not that much more of a bonus, so let's take the recon. Uh, this is a more interesting kind of mission because basically it says there's a base out there, we need you to go find it. It will be you advance towards the center of the map, scout around a little bit, you'll find the base. There will be cybered facilities there. Um, technically, you don't have to destroy the base. However, for the money, I always do, because you get credits for destroying cybered buildings, just like you do for destroying regular cybrids. So, Parsis, gravity is a little high, atmosphere is poisonous, electromagnetic field has no effects. Uh, there are enough cliffs to provide some defense. A gray ground, gray smooth ground, uh, is quicker to cross, and the orange ground tends to be jagged and rough. And so that's difficult to cross and can't affect targeting as well. So let's go on a recon trip, shall we? All right, this is your pilot, Chang. I'm under orders to evacuate if my carrier is threatened. Fair enough, Chang. All right, so we're going to have to cross this canyon, which will be slow. Let's just get everybody moving. We'll have the giant behind for fire support. Sir Kai. And we're going to keep our recon herc well protected in the middle here. Okay, we have a Parasite V1 shooting at us from somewhere. We're going to advance down into the ditch. Warning, enemy detected. There's that Parasite. So as you can see, this terrain down here move cost of 53 on rough ground and 64 on jagged ground. Then you move up onto the uneven ground and then the level ground and the hard ground, and then you have smooth ground, which is very quick to walk over. Uh, our hit chance is abysmal, but I'm going to shoot off the lasers anyway, just in case. That hit chance is a little better. Okay, we've taken down his shields. And let's get a couple 120mm shells on him. Good job. Low targeting potential. Yeah, hit chance to hit 0%. Won't even want to shoot in that case. Uh, I'm not bothering to crouch because this is just a Cerebrus. Or a Cerebrus. It's only one. It can't actually penetrate my shield. Okay, we exchanged a few shots through shields. Here I can use my Proto Nanite Repair. See, I have 150 units available. I can either repair overall, or I can repair each item one at a time. I'm just going to repair overall. So there we go. I can't repair armor, but I can repair every other individual component. So my armor is now permanently weakened, but everything else is fine. We're going to get up to flank this Cerebrus and chain gun it to death. Then we're going to shoot some lasers at him. We're going to get up here on this hill. Elevation, of course, gives you help with targeting. Our EMPs do very nice damage. Weapon shields. Try to take down as many shields as we can. Uh, 
And you with your EMPs, uh, actually, yeah, go over that way. Stay behind the combat units. There's another genocide, and a malignus, and a third genocide. Good. See, this game lies to you sometimes, which is interesting, because they said intelligence reports a very low cybrid presence. Usually that means there's like a couple of cybrids here. But in this case, intelligence was just wrong. Uh, intelligence failed to notice the presence of an actual cybrid battle group on this planet. And, as a result, we are uh, a little outgunned at the moment. Shields. So let's make sure that our shields are focused properly. Koras, interestingly, because he's been moving and firing so many weapons, is running low on energy. So is Bluebeard. Cyclops still has quite a bit. Mr. Miyagi still has lots. Sir Kai still has lots. But the Oni is running short. You can also notice by the different colors of the projectiles that Malignus is equipped with compression lasers. So the genocides are spreading out to flank us on multiple fronts, which is good tactics, but I hate it. I don't want them to do that. Movement. All right, stand up. Okay, his shields are down. Good. The giant will take him out. Next, let's deal with this guy. Crap. All right, that's two genocides down. Shoot a laser at him. Um, Oni might be in trouble because his shields are fairly low. Fortunately, I think this Malignus and this Genocide are on different shield facings. If they weren't, then the Oni might be in trouble. See, I don't have enough energy to turn this Herc around at this point. I can still crouch him. You can always do that. He uses battery power. Um, This Genocide, I really want to die. So... And I have cannons here, and I have cannons here. 32%, 42%. What I can do is I can move Mr. Miyagi up. Crap. Shields. Well, Mr. Miyagi does have 1,200 shields. And they went for the giant. I don't know why they did that. Sheer unmitigated foolishness. Movement. Weapons unresponsive. Weapons unresponsive. Okay, so we've taken down the cyber attack force. Now all we have to do is find the base. There's the command node. Shields. And there are probably a couple of turrets around here somewhere as well. But we're just going to advance into the base Weapons unresponsive. and destroy it. Because like I said, Objective achieved. you don't have to destroy the cyber base. But why wouldn't you? Yep, Cyber Threat eliminated. Okay, there we go. So we got 27,000 credits. We got an 8,000 Cyber Bounty, which is pretty impressive. A 6,100 auto or Auto Mine, which is meh. And we were promoted to the rank of Squad Leader. Yay, another promotion. Promotions! Okay, seven Hercs, nine Biodrams. All right, the biggest tech advance this time around is guaranteed to be the least popular with the Derms. There are auto-destruct devices available for each Herc that damage up to a 4 hex radius from the exploding Herc. Don't blow up my Herc bay. It's just as well that some of your comrades didn't make it this far, lest to screw up. The promotion to squad leader is one that every base commander fears. It's the first time you people can do some real damage to yourselves. The demon Herc, this bad boy back here, isn't a bigger ogre, it's another class of Herc. Pay attention to the briefing, because if anyone mismanages one of these things, the least that'll happen is that I'll go ballistic on you. Literally. Once again, some of you will be receiving special Bioderm assignments. 
I would encourage you to use them wisely. You'll also notice that you are now allowed to command more bioderms than Herx. You are encouraged to vary your pilots and rotate your link assignments as you encounter different battle situations. That can be useful, but honestly, it's usually better just to have one pilot per Herc and make sure that that pilot has high skills in everything that Herc needs. So, the Demon. It's no wonder the newbies don't get this model, it acts alone very well without escort. It's a one-man slaughterhouse is what it is. I think that might be a malfunctioning sound file, that humming noise. I'm just going to click off this screen. And we got Quabble. Quabble is a protohuman bioderm, so a protoderm, using a new substance called plasmatter. Um, somewhat unstable, the promise of higher skill ratings and a higher learning curve. So basically, Quabble is like the earlier protoderms, but his skill ratings are much higher at base, and he learns a lot faster. So as he goes up in rank, his skills increase more. Your rank entitles you to command more Hercs and Bioderms. Yes, thank Herc you, base. we know. So let's go to the Herc Bay, and we can show off the demon. I actually cannot afford a demon with the credits I currently have. I could buy a demon base, but a basic demon, it has four energy weapons and two missiles, so the same kind of loadout as the Malignus Cybrid. However, it's much larger, it has heavier armor, and it can mount a heavier shield. The demon can mount a shield rated up to 2400 which is twice, or almost twice, what the Ogre can mount. Uh, it has four device slots. So basically, this is the first truly independent battle herc. A an Ogre can fight alone to some extent, but its cannons just don't have the punch to actually put Cybrids down. A Demon can legitimately fight alone, engage targets, and destroy them individually. So, if we were to sell the Oni, we could afford a Demon. For us. I think I'm going to sell the Cyclops, actually. So we're going to sell the Cyclops. And we're going to buy our first demon. Who we will name... Mephisto. So we're going to give it a flex of drive. You may notice the demon is slower than the ogre was. We've got, we've got the battery 360. I could give it a 2400 shield right off the bat. However, at this level, the cybrids I'm fighting, I don't think I need a 2400 shield, and it would lower its speed drastically, and I currently have no way to raise speed again. So we're going to stick with a 1500. We can go up to the L440 targeting computer now, that's new. That gives us a plus 14% to target. So, that's... It's very important to upgrade your targeting computers. And we can get total life support, which gives us plus 2 health and plus 2 detox per turn. Um, it's 8 energy per turn instead of 3, that's still not much, so I'm gonna do it. Now, here's the very interesting thing, we've gotten a lot more weapons. In particular, we've gotten some weapons that I really, really like for the demon. So we have the SCX Sea Lays, which does a lot more damage compared to the SC-1000 we were using, 120-48. The SCX does 180 and 72, so it's a much more powerful and versatile weapon. We have the Auto Elf, which is very short range. It has a max range of 2, but it fires 3 times a turn, and it does 20 penetrating damage each time. So that can be useful, not for main battle hercs like this, I don't think. And finally, we have the Plasma Cannon and the Heavy Plasma Cannon. They have short range, range 9, but they do a ton of damage to both armor and shields. So what I like to do with demons is I like to equip them with either SCX c lasses or HP Cannons in their top slots, because HP Cannons do 300 damage to shields and 150 to armor. They do require the Plasma skill, so that's something we have to look for in our Bioderms now. But I'm going to give Mephisto two HP Cannons, two SC-1000s for long-range shield-busting power. The missile MY is a saturation missile, it hits multiple hexes, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I'm going to give him the missile SP-2, which does twice the damage of an SP missile. Another option is the missile SG, which is more accurate, but it only does 75 damage and I like more damage. But we're going to go with missile SP-2s. We're going to take out the resupply drone and replace it with a proto nanite repair. And that is all of our money. Demons are expensive. 
we can't even afford to reinforce the legs. So, but we've got the demon. So now, uh, let's link a bioderm to it. So here's Quabble. Quabble has 60 and everything. See, we need somebody with plasma, energy, and missile for the demon. So, Kadisha has energy and missile, but her plasma is very bad. Bobble is 60 and everything. Koras's plasma is abysmal. Tarsus has 60 plasma, but he's a, in a giant. Jan, high energy, low missile, and moderate plasma. It's looking like it's going to be Quabble. So I'm going to see what upgrades I can do for Quabble. Now, Quabble's upgrades are pretty cheap. So we're going to go plasma, energy, and we can't quite afford missile. But notice that his upgrades are 7 points instead of 5. Quabble really does learn quickly. So, we will link Quabble to the demon. And then, we will go on a... Just a quick mining mission, maybe. Or, oh, or secure area. A secure area mission is very simple. You go in, there are cybrids on the map, you kill all the cybrids, and you leave. What the cybers term a mobile defense node, it's just a bunch of cybers. So, Daryl, 100% gravity, no atmosphere, and shields are much more powerful on Daryl, which is interesting. So I'm going to take this mission, and we'll go kill us some cybers, earn us some money. So, now notice, Quabble, Quabble can't freaking move on this snow, he just can't. So, what we're going to do is, ooh, that's a big ore field right over there, that's handy. We don't know what direction the cybers are going to be coming from. I'm going to, you can rotate the map with these two buttons up here, by the way. In, um, I think it's 45 degree increments. Or, no, you're rotating by hex size, so you're right, rotating by 60 degree increments. So I'm just going to have Quabble sit here. Uh, he can't be shot from this side, he's so far down, so I'm going to focus his shield in that direction. Uh, we will have the ogres. Nobody can really move fast on this snow. We're going to have everybody kind of take shelter behind the cliff with their shields focused away from it. There we go. And we'll just see where the cybers come from. Okay, the cybers are coming over the top. Ah, uh, we'll just leave him down there, actually, for now. So, can't really open fire yet. So, we will just stand here. Yeah, we actually took the Spectre's shields down with opportunity fire there. We've got a genocide at the bottom of the cliff. Our troops will advance. Okay, so we've got three genocides and two malignuses. Uh, the genocides are V2, so the genocides have been upgraded. They'll have more powerful weapons, more powerful shielding. Uh, in that case, I'm going to move Mr. Miyagi back just a little bit and crouch him because I want the shots to go into my larger and tougher herbs. I'll also crouch Oni because he's taken some shield damage. Alright, but they're moving very slowly, so hopefully, yeah, we can get to the top of the cliff and have the height advantage on them. So see, now I have a 99% chance to hit shooting down like this. See, notice that he is armed with plasma cannons. Shields. I'm actually going to shoot my missiles at him just because I want to deal some damage. Hopefully knock some of his weapons offline. And then you crouch. Shields. Uh-oh. 
Whew. Okay. Oni just nearly bit it. I know it didn't look like it, because he didn't take any damage, but if his front shields had gone down, then every single one of these units would have been able to unload their missiles and cannons into him, and he probably would have just straight up died. Oh, shoot, no, I don't want to shoot missiles. You ninny. Thirty four percent, fifty seven percent, there's ninety one percent. Shields movement. So he's going to fall back. Shields. And Mephisto, so this is why you might want 2400 shields, because with 2400 shield points, a demon could just stand up in front of all these guys and get wailed on for at least a turn and be fine. Movement. Oh crap. Okay. We lost our first Herc. So, Bluebeard took a direct hit to the life support. And Jean just died, because his life support was reduced to 0%. I believe we can salvage this Herc if we win the mission. So I am going to spend its nano repair, no reason why not. And that will make it cheaper to repair later if we need to. So this guy... 63, 37, 95. Alright, Genocide down. Bluebeard, Jean is dead. Life signs terminated. Atmosphere damage, death. We've still got two malignances and a genocide, so I want to crouch him. I want to move him up over there, and I want to take this genocide out. Oh, shields down. And now I'm out of energy. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. Weapons unresponsive. Okay. Okay then. Okay. I see how it is. I'm just doing as much damage to this guy as possible in the hopes of eliminating some of his weaponry. Okay, they're shooting at Mr. Miyagi. That was why I moved him up. They were shooting at him because as the lightest Herc, they registered him as the most vulnerable. When actually, Oni was by far the most vulnerable Herc that they could see. Alright, now we finally got him dead. Movement. Now, we can move Mephisto down, and Mephisto can continue pummeling the enemy. With his heavy plasma cannons and such. And yep, Bluebeard is still totally disabled. Movement. Shields. Target blocked. Right. We will also move Sir Kai up just to soak fire, basically. Um, he might as well shoot. Do a little bit of damage. Now the Cybrids are retreating. Is good because. Ooh, baby! Alright. We've got the shields down on the last Malignus. Now, let's see if we can... Yes. Alright. Cyber Threat eliminated. We got 28,000 for that mission, which is not enough. So we kept Bluebeard, but we lost Jan. And we also have Kadisha. So we'll probably put Kadisha in Bluebeard. Herc base. Herc base. But we'll manage our Hercs. Get some repairs going. Repair. Gonna cost 721 to repair the whole fleet. Entire so we'll repeat, repair the fleet, 
and I'll leave this one here. So thank you all for joining me again. I really appreciate each and every one of my viewers. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, because more content like this will be coming to your way on the regular. Thank you once again, and I will see you all in the next video.